Yeah, but we're settled. We're here, thriving, <laughs> surviving. Yes, yeah. we're, we're still very happy. <laughs> Hey guys. Hey guys. So we had a lot of questions about how we came to China. So we just wanted to give a rundown of how everything went. Um, I won't be doing subtitles for this one because I feel like it's going to be a long one and I want to get it out there as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so we'll start from the beginning. Um, the first thing you need to come to China is a lot of motivation, yes. <laughs> a lot of time, and yeah, you just have to put in a lot of hard work. It wasn't easy for us, and actually it, it was really hard right up until just last week when we got our, uh, what is it called, resident permit? Yes, residential yeah, permit. Our yeah. residential permit, it took forever, so yeah, let's start. <laughs> Hey, let's just start of the story. So in the middle of uh, 2022, and we just think about maybe it is not good to keep our life like this. And we stay home and uh, we didn't do a lot. And we're kind of like a lost of a, you know, ambition to do some stuff for our career and life development. So we think about maybe check the different opportunities and then I contact my friend and uh, some of my old professors um, in China first to ask some like uh, information about is it possible or potentially I can go to China to work. Um, and then after that, I also contact some recruiter companies online to see whether they can accept some like a higher like a uh, overseas talent mm -hmm. um, to uh, connect us with the local Chinese companies or institute universities and see whether we can work together. What to was the... Did you have a website that you used for the, to find a recruiter? Yes, and there are several ones. Uh, the one I'm using called Lie Pin, which is like a Chinese pin with a name. So I'm so lucky to find some like a good uh, recruiters online. Um, and we found one, um, and uh, um, the company is very professional. And uh, first of all, they ask you about what's your uh, demand, what type of job you want to work for, and um, which cities you want to stay, and uh, what level of position you want to have. So uh, based on this requirement, and uh, the company just help to connect to different cities, um, local government, and some bigger name companies mm -hmm. and to see whether we can build connections because at the beginning I mentioned several cities mm -hmm. so they just helped yeah. me to find several ones and we choose uh, the southern bay area like mm -hmm. Guangzhou, Shenzhen we, I think you you have to be like flexible yes with where you want to go right now I yes. think um, maybe once China opens up a little bit more you can kind of pinpoint like oh I want to definitely go to Shanghai or Beijing but I feel right now um, you kind of have to see what companies are actually willing to go through this process with you and sometimes it's not in the city that you originally chose. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I have to say, um, at that time we only focus on some traditional like big names mm -hmm. like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, mm -hmm. Shenzhen. But um, my friends told me you also need to think about like the, the Thai level one cities in China. So for example, like the city we're living now in Nanjing, mm -hmm. Hangzhou, Wuhan, Chengdu, Xi'an, they're all good cities, mm -hmm. but you need to give them the, the chance to, to know them and see whether they're, uh, how they grow and they need a lot of talents as well. So once um, I was lucky to be connected with a local company based on the help from the recruiter company, and we just start to set up the interviews online. A so, lot. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot of interviews because this is not because a Chinese company um, doubted about your capabilities. We need to know each other. This mm -hmm. is so different, right? So, so we built the connection by having those interviews, probably three or four rounds. Mainly, uh, talk about uh, my parts. I trying to learn their parts. What we're doing. Whether we have some like, uh, um, you know, um, overlapped fields mm -hmm. of the jobs. Um, and then we build a great connection. We have a great 
talking. But unfortunately, I can not be in China to have an in-person meeting with them before uh, my formal time of the job because of COVID the situation, the visa thing. So they understand. They just said, that's fine. We just ha had more like a video chat and trying to know as much as we can. So after that, um, we confirm, like we can work together. So at like that time, the company has some like a, um, you know, pre-contract things like paperwork to let you know, oh, we decide to hire you, this is your salary, this is your position. And those paperwork were used uh, by me to apply for my, they call it like a, a work permit um, pre-document. Mm -hmm. So those ones can be used for applying visa for me, my wife, Christina, and our daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel those took a long time. Yes. Yeah. Because this, this apply, uh, <laughs> the application needs time to be proceeded. Mm -hmm. Like in China, it's like seven to 15 business days. So we kind of like waiting in Canada to hear any good news coming. And once they have this, and they have those like um, documents, like the electrical uh, version of the documents sent to us. But you need to know this application needs a lot of documents from you. So mm -hmm. they need me to, to have some verification of my, my you know, PhD degrees and uh, some of my working experience documents and some mm -hmm. awards I won, some paper I published before. So tons of things they need because they want to know yeah. you more. And um, for all of your official documents, make sure you have them translated and notarized yes. because you're definitely going to need them. Even if you don't need them for the initial process, once you're in China, they're going to need them. So if yes. you don't want to be waiting and waiting like us, then <laughs> make sure you have everything translated and notarized. Yes, mm -hmm. and also because of the family, mm -hmm. uh, we also need to prepare the documents really to our marriage certificate and mm -hmm. our daughter's uh, birth certificate and mm -hmm. also translation as well. Yeah. So it's tons of, uh, you know, documents we need to prepare. But we went through that, everything was good. So once we have that document, uh, all of us, we went to our local Chinese embassy to apply for the visa in our place, it's in Calgary. Mm -hmm. So we went to Calgary and got the visa done. Um, there's also a lot of details, like you need to, um, you know, um, call them to reserve the spot to, for this application. And once you're there, you pay the fees, you also need to wait a couple of days to get this visa. Um, but everything went well, so once we have that, uh, we need to c consider how to buy the flight ticket to China. Uh, this is another story about dealing mm -hmm. with COVID. Like we need to have the COVID test. Yeah. We need to, um, you know, book the ticket by the specific airline. Because mm -hmm. not all the airlines went to the, the places you want to go. So mm -hmm. we choose Xiamen Airline and they have their requirements at a time like mm, for the COVID. yeah um so. also at the time i think a lot of uh there were a lot of flight cancellations yes. into china so we kind of had to take our chances and just hope that things would work out yes yeah but i think it's gotten a lot better now so yeah i think if you guys book a flight to china it most likely will be okay yes so <laughs> yeah. what we talked about maybe is not an issue anymore but we just share our experience mm -hmm. so once we landed in Xiamen and mm -hmm. the first task is quarantine mm -hmm. so we were in the hotel and uh, for eight days and during the eight days we just stay there and make sure we don't have any issues and luckily we didn't get it and then once it's done um, we just book the domestic flights from Xiamen to Nanjing, my, mm -hmm. my living city is here, and um, uh, you need to go to your office in person mm -hmm. to meet them and also, uh, you know, uh, finalize your final contract paper. And then you need to work with the company to get the final application of the work permit. Because of what I mentioned before, that's a pre-document. You need the real card, like a physical card. So that's when you're physically here to work with this company. So that mm -hmm. takes some like seven day work business days. Uh, during this time, you also need to do the medical exam 
mm -hmm. um, to make sure your house condition is okay. So once it's done, um, the last and the most important one is uh, they call the foreign talent, like a residential permit. Mm -hmm. So that one, that is the one will be used for all three of us um, because we're foreign people here. Mm -hmm. So those ones, um, you also need to submit it online or go to the office and then wait probably like 15 business days. So totally, mm -hmm. there's a lot of waiting time for you to get it. Yes. Yeah. So we just waited for a long time, but uh, everything is done. Um, mainly just mm -hmm. follow the requirements and be patient and uh, you will be there. And right now, we're so happy and we're all legally here in China. Yes. <laughs> and uh, my company was great and we worked well. I started my job two weeks ago and the Chinese New Year is coming and we just mm -hmm. want to celebrate. Yeah. Yes. I think, um, yeah, we definitely had a few moments where we thought maybe it wouldn't work out <laughs> like we thought it would. Um, so yeah, I think the biggest thing is just to stay motivated, to read all the fine print, and to to really work hard towards your goal to come here. It's not an easy thing to come here. It was quite expensive to come here. Um, we also recommend having like at least two to three months of living expenses because it did take a long time for like all of those work permits to go through, the residential permit, Plus, once you start at your company, normally you don't get paid until like a month after you've started. Um, and in order to rent an apartment, you're usually expected to pay two to three months plus a deposit. And yeah, it's just a lot of expense in the yes. beginning. <laughs> yes. But uh, the good yeah. news for us is like uh, we have some like um, uh, rebate mm -hmm. um, from the recruiter companies because they're trying to hire the high, le uh, high level talent here. Mm -hmm. So I was categorized like that. So they paid the flight ticket for myself. And also the company helped us as well uh, for the settlement as well. And mm -hmm. the company paid uh, lots of, uh, the big part of our expense as well. So yeah. we're very lucky for that. Yeah, make sure you get a company that is offering you a settlement package, like to settle down in China, to pay for your flights, to pay for a portion of your rent, if not all of it, and also to pay for healthcare for yourself. Um, yeah, make sure you definitely look into lots of different offers before you just take one. Yes, that's mm -hmm. very important. And another suggestion I want to say is like trying to collect as much as um, possible of the information you can, mm -hmm. because that's very important. I have a lot of friends uh, living in China and they helped us a lot because at the beginning in the quarantine hotel you need to use a um, cell phone payment yeah, so many need, codes yeah <laughs> you need to use a cell phone uh, from China mm -hmm. and everything um, you just really like definitely you need help from the others um, yeah and the good part is I can read Chinese as well so mm -hmm. we kind of like to get everything done uh, without any big problems so another thing is WeChat is used for everything here or Alipay. Um, so you have to make sure that you have some type of payment, whether it's like credit cards, um, and I recommend also having cash because in order to have WeChat pay, you have to have a bank account. In order to have a bank account, you have to have a work permit. Um, and everything is connected so if you don't have all of those things set up then you can't get WeChat and then you can't pay for anything <laughs> so yeah make sure you have multiple ways to pay for things like credit cards cash and try to get your WeChat set up as soon as possible <laughs> yes um, I give you the order first mm -hmm. of all going to China settle down first option get a cell phone that's mm -hmm. really, really important. Yeah. And after the cell phone is done, finish all the paperwork with the company to get your work permit, to get a residential permit. Those two things are done and you can use them to open a bank account. Mm -hmm. And then once you have a bank account, you can, and also your cell phone, those two things can help you connect to connect all the Chinese like apps to doing mm -hmm. the online purchase or, you know, call the cab, buying the grocery, everything. But 
um, before these two things, you can still prepare for cash. Like because mm -hmm. at the beginning, you need to do things. You can use cash still. Yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're settled. Yeah. We're here, thriving, <laughs> surviving. Yes, so. we're we're still very happy. <laughs> like. Uh, this is a tough journey. I think because of COVID, make things harder. But I think things start to go back to normal, and uh, mm -hmm. everything going to be very easier. And China uh, is opening and trying to mm -hmm. embrace the whole world again, and yeah. uh, you know, build the connections. Because this world needs that. So mm -hmm. we're we're expecting more exciting stuff coming to our life. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and with hope, with confidence. And uh, if you decide to move to China, no matter temporarily or long term wise, mm -hmm. and uh, just be happy, be confident, and come here, uh, there's a lot of things you're gonna enjoy. Like, we really love our city right now mm -hmm. in Nanjing, and also this whole metropolitan, including Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Shanghai. And mm -hmm. we have tons of things to explore. And our kid, uh, my daughter, our daughter, definitely loves it yeah so, yeah we're happy <laughs> yeah. and if you guys have any questions at all about the whole process or if you want a more in-depth video about a particular section of the process definitely let us know in the comments below we'd be happy to make another video um, yeah and I wish you guys luck for those who want to come to China I wish you guys a smooth journey and that it happens exactly how you need it to <laughs> yes mm -hmm. we yeah. want to help you guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.